A very old Stuart S50 steam plant, part 4, making a new valve rod and a slide valve driving block. This old Stuart S50 is part of a Bassett Loke steam plant, and it's very different to any other of the S50 range I've ever worked on. The steam chest and the cylinder is all one casting, it doesn't detach. I've been tidying up the port face using a piece of wet to dry sandpaper and a piece of mahogany. Now it's time to clean up the slide valve using a spot of oil on some 400 grit wet to dry sandpaper, and in no time at all that's fine. Here I'm cleaning the slots at the back of the slide valve which are full of rust and general debris. I'm going to use a piece of stainless steel to make the new valve rod because the last one was very very rusty. The previous valve rod was so rusty it's completely unserviceable. So I've unscrewed it from the clevis and discarded it, and now it's time to look at how I'm going to make this valve rod. The first part of the job is to turn down one end so it fits into the guide hole in the end of the steam chest. It's quite difficult turning such a small piece of stainless steel. For one thing stainless steel is quite hard, and another is it's so small it bends. So the cutting tool does most of the cutting on the way back, and here I'm cleaning it up first of all with some emery cloth, then I'm rounding the end with a file, and finally I use a piece of wet to dry sandpaper to get a good finish. This needs to be a very loose fit in the guide, and when I try it in the guide, it can't go very far down into it because the hole is very shallow. But that should be okay, the engine was built this way and it ran successfully at some stage in its life. It's time now to thread the other end to fit into the clevis. With the piece of steel bar firmly clamped in the chuck of my Boxford lathe, I'm using one of my tailstock die holders to cut a thread on it. The thread is 7BA. And here I'm temporarily screwing the valve rod into the clevis to make sure that it fits, and it does. But almost as soon as I'd fitted the clevis I removed it, because I need to machine a thread quite a long way down the other end, and this will fit in the driving block which makes the valve travel adjustable. I need to know how long a thread to cut on the main part of the shaft. As I don't have a drawing for this engine, I need to know what the dimensions are, and the best way to find out is to connect the valve rod to the eccentric rod and mark an area where I'm going to cut the thread. And in this clip at a very high speed as the video is speeded up, I'm cutting the thread using my tailstock die holder. And the adjustment of the die is fairly perfect and very very soon I get a really clean thread. This is all that is left of the original driving block and it has a very rusty piece of steel down the middle of it. If I really wanted to, I could dissolve out the steel part using some alum powder and water mixed together, boiled up in a pan, and then left for 24 hours. But as this is a very simple part, it's not worth going to the trouble. It's quicker to make a replacement. That reminds me, I really must buy a new drilling machine. Just look at the state of this. Maybe it's the chuck, I don't know, but the drilling machine itself has always been a bit of a disaster area. Anyway, I'm using this centre drill off centre as it may be, to make a hole in the work. And once I drilled this pilot hole with the wobbly centre drill, I then changed that for a twist drill, which is tapping size for 7BA. And this was a lot steadier. The next part of the job is to thread the piece of bar 7BA, using a 7BA tap. Keeping the tap as square as possible to the work, sometimes the camera angle distorts this perspective. Now the hole is drilled and threaded, it's time to cut off the end part using the bandsaw, and yes my fingers are fairly close to the bandsaw, but far enough away not to cause personal injury. Notice I'm cutting the piece of bar on its side, this makes sure it is at 90 degrees to the saw blade. The next part of the job is to do a test fit of the assembly in the steam chest. But in my opinion, the drive block is a little bit too tight on the valve. So, it's over to the wet or dry sandpaper method to remove some metal. I don't need to remove a lot of metal, it just needs to be a very easy fit in the slot in the slide valve. And this will allow the pressure of the steam to hold the valve securely against the port face. In this clip I'm screwing it all together to make sure that it works. This engine looks very much like a standard Stuart S50. But from what I can gather, it isn't. It's metric, so it was probably built for Bassett Loke in Germany. 
In this clip I'm rotating the crankshaft to see how far the valve moves back and forth over the ports, and it seems to be OK. The slide valve doesn't uncover every part of the port, but it should be fine. This is a bottle of Loctite 243, and as it says on the bottle, it's thread locker. This will make sure that the valve spindle doesn't work loose and start to rotate when the engine's running. I held the newly made stainless steel valve rod in one of these. A surgical caliper which is smooth faced, unlike a pair of pliers which has serrations which would have marked the work. I'm going to make a new gland nut, this one isn't a good fit. It would probably support the valve rod better if it was packed with some graphited yarn. But mechanically it's not good so I will make a new one. I've oiled the crankshaft so everything rotates perfectly and the valve goes back and forth ok without fouling at either end. So I can move on to the next part of the job. But that will be in the next episode. For now, thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainsteam Models website. Click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that you will find it very easy to find other videos that you may like to watch.